Greetings, critical viewers. We're playing a game called The Stanley Parable, which is a mod for Half-Life 2. I know absolutely nothing about it. So let's start a new game. How are you guys doing? Good? I'm doing pretty good, too. We'll see how good this game is. Like I said, I know, I know nothing about it. I assume there's a man named Stanley. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Look at that. Called it. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. <laughs> Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Okay. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. I love this narrator. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. Oh, did he? I think we'll decide what Stanley does, not you. Who's that guy I think he is? With his voice. We're gonna walk into the hallway, huh? That isn't, I don't know about that. No, it's not letting me do anything. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Hello. Stanley decided to go to the staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. What a ridiculous hallway. We're, wait, we're doing what? We're going where? Here. Nobody's at their monitors. Goodness me! When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, did he? Oh, did he now? I think I decide what happens next. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley <laughs> knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Oh, did he? Oh, did he now? Stanley went straight. Stanley was so bad at following directions, <laughs> it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Oh, Maybe this crazy. is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. And since he was walking into the middle of nowhere, and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley <laughs> decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Wait, wait. I didn't want to... Well, I didn't, but I want to find out what happens. Oh, man, I ruined everything. Let's go. Wait. I want to go down. I'm pressing E. Is that not correct? The elevator's moving, so... <laughs> it gave me a bunch of no sounds. It was like, no. That's not right. Stanley. My name is Stanley. What's going on? Stanley. Santa Claus? Sorry. Sorry, I'll shut up. Who, okay, okay, let's let's be real for a second. Who has a better voice, me or this guy? Come on. What? I... I wasn't... I didn't really want to do this. Hey, where'd the narrator go? It almost perplexed Stanley that he had actually gone and stepped <laughs> into this metal trap. After all, it should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. Oh. But he thought to himself, this is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly good story. So he resigned and willingly accepted his fate, the inevitable end toward which he had spent so long stumbling. Oh my god. Finally, Stanley. 
Can I get out? Can I get out? I can get out. Wriggle to safety. Come on. Come on. Stanley. Stanley. No. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as he sent his subject down the conveyor belt and into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Did it really? What? What just... Wait! It's a shame, then, that for all his work, it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he really think he would accomplish anything by murdering this disposable vessel? What is... What is with this game? I don't understand! What is going on? Where am I? Hello? This is strange. Exit. What? What did I just do? I did something... <laughs> Every possible choice Stanley could make had been designed for him long before he ever set foot here. The narrator wanted to kill him. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start. What the? Okay, this is a mind F. I can't open any of these doors. I should just stop trying. I can only walk through open doors. I can't walk through doors that are closed. What's this? What? There's no salvation for either of these two, I'm afraid. The narrator had as little power over Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. But listen to me. This story is not over. What? You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape what? and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now, and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... <laughs> oh my god. What? Oh, okay. Alright, we're gonna... We'll come back. We'll... We'll do what he says. Hang on. And he came to a set of two open doors. He entered the door on his left. Fine. Here we are. I entered the door on the left to be a good boy. <clears throat> Excuse me. What? When Stanley entered the lounge. He was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss hoping that he would find an answer there. Okay, is anyone... Stanley, why are you not weirded out by these automatically opening and closing doors? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh, uh-oh, being disobedient again. What happens when I go this way? Oh, we should be obedient. Let's be obedient. We were disobedient in the last playthrough. We'll... We'll, we'll do the right thing this time. And just see what happens. Just see if the narrator is trying to kill me or not. Oh, goodness. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's office. Stanley had never seen this panel before, and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. There's In fact, four. only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. And Did so it? he had what? assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Thanks, narrator. Yet incredibly, by simply <laughs> pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Oh my god. Stanley ventured this is hilarious. into the newly opened passageway. Wh where are you taking me, narrator? 
I don't trust you at all. He sounds like Santa Claus, doesn't he? As he drew deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. Stanley, and just as he no began idea. to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... Uh... Rows and rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. It was mine. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers, but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. Yeah, why thank you. Up so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him. What? Revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. Uh, what ultimate truth? What's going on? An enormous control panel Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Uh, Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Um, Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. Uh, and the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage. <laughs> At the peak of his anger, something happened. <laughs> a spark. Stanley what? looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. What? And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. Did, did I? Did I really? What's this button do over here? Do we dare press it? Okay. Well, it doesn't do anything, so never mind. That's fine. Here we go. Boom. What's up, man? I'm gonna go check out this here generator. Ugh, man, he scales those ladders fast. The closer he felt to freedom, the further from enslavement. Enslavement. That's a good word. Enslave. Sort of like manslaughter. <laughs> yeah, those of you uh, who haven't seen Brian Regan's bit about manslaughter, look it up. Brian Regan, manslaughter. Hilarious. Well, I think it's funny. You might not. I don't know. Engage generator or disable generator? Well, do I, can I save? Oh, goodness. Let's see what happens when we engage it. That this is. Do we? Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? I did. How you got a problem? After you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Yes. Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> what? I applaud your effort. I really do. But you need to understand. There's only so much that machine can do. Can it make you, you shut up? to let it go. Turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do better than that. What? I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you have. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized that he had just initiated the what? network's emergency detonation system. In okay, the event Gladys. that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Oh, let's make it say, um, two minutes. Wait. Now, this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Go ahead, play with those controls all you like. The real controls are where I'm sitting. Did you really ever believe you held any power? Did you not think I knew what I was doing? When I erased your co-workers and turned off the machine, I was offering you freedom, an escape. I didn't what? have to do that. This is ridiculous. I've this story many times, and I don't always set you free. Sometimes you just sit there, day after day after day, doing your job forever, 
and then dying alone. But when I actually give you the freedom to control your own actions, it's not enough. I let you go, and you trapped yourself just the same. You just weren't made to handle this sort of responsibility, I'm afraid. But you know what you were made for? Pushing buttons. Well, you're really pushing my buttons right now. now. Oh, I'm enjoying this. Tell you what, I'll throw some extra time on the clock just because I'm having so much fun. Man, you, you got really sinister. You see, I want to watch you for every long second you try to puzzle this out. After all, it should make sense. Oh, come on! The timer, the nuclear detonation, the mysterious facility, it's all here. This is a video game. Except for one thing there, hero. You've got no weapon, no vehicle. You don't even know where you're going. What do I do? When you saw that timer, you just instinctively started trying to find an exit, didn't you? Oh my you? god. <laughs> in fact, I bet you're still looking for a way out. Yes! I bet you're clicking on everything in this room, trying to open doors or vents or something and solve yes. the puzzle. As though this game has a solution. As though it can be won. Oh my god. That timer is not a catalyst to keep things moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. Well, this is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. It's the moment when the hero realizes that despite his best efforts, he is powerless to his environment. And oh my then god. He lets go. Okay, philosopher, I'm done listening to you. And he dies. You can't do anything here? 30 seconds, Stan. 30 seconds. Until a boom. And then nothing. No ending to this story, just you dying. I suppose you could have gotten an actual ending if you played along, but that just wouldn't have been your style. Oh my ending. god. Instead, you'll perish knowing that Fine, the only I choice you fate. made here was to turn on that machine and to start this timer. But you won't be alone, because I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here to watch every second of your inevitable life oh from god. the time we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever after. Oh my god. I didn't think he would actually kill me. Oh my god. This game. Let's play it again. Let's do it. Okay. We're gonna disable it this time. Did I disable it? What just happened? Blackness. Power gone. All alone. And then... As he stepped through the door into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's body. <laughs> he had seen power. He had seen enslavement. And he had destroyed it. The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing, nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he felt was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No more bosses. No more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. That's right. And he stepped out into the world. And he felt the cool breeze upon his skin. And Stanley was happy. I was happy at the beginning, wasn't I? It's, <laughs> huh. Interesting. So that's the ending you get if you do what you were supposed to do. But we don't really play like that, do we, critical viewers? We have to find out what happens if we rebel. So I'm going to go back and see what happens if I rebel at other stages of the game. <laughs> okay, see you guys in a second. Coming to a Okay, staircase. here we go. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. We're going to walk downstairs. But Stanley just couldn't do it. <laughs> he considered the possibility of facing his boss of admitting that he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, was it really worth taking that risk? 
all because he believed everyone had disappeared. His boss would think he was crazy. That's right. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. What? Everyone I know simply vanishing out of the blue, there's almost no other explanation for it. And a nagging fear began to creep up in his mind. Questions what? that had been there all along. He just hadn't put his finger on them yet. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Oh my god. Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? Thank you for addressing that. And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Was he just walking around in circles? Oh my god. Where am I? He thought. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise until he came to the issue that had been slowly boiling until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head dictating <laughs> everything that I'm doing and thinking? Suddenly, every door slammed shut. No, 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 Stanley screamed. I need to get out of here. I need to know that there's something out there. I need to know it's not just all in my head. What? And he screamed and clutched at his skull as the voice grew harsher and the music in the background rose higher and higher. And then, moments before collapsing to the ground, Stanley clenched his fists and screamed to anyone who might be listening, I'm not real! I'm not real! Don't believe any of it! None of it's real! And then everything went black. Oh my god. <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? 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 <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. What? She got dressed, went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. But her walk on this day was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Moments after seeing him, she would turn, run to the nearest police station, and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief seconds, she merely stood there unable to move. The tragedy was not the death of a single person. It was that she would never know this man's story, never hear in his own words what had happened to him, or what he believed had happened to him. For to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observe from a distance and pity him. But Mariella had places to be and people to meet with, very important people, whose impressions of her would affect her career and indeed the rest of her life. She stood there for only a moment, looking down at the body, and then she ran. Oh my god. This game is great. Let's do more experiments. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. Let's go. And like that, he was back on track. Yep. Nothing else happens though, hmm. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Oh man. Ah, it's just so hard to get it right. Don't you have anything to say, narrator? Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the keypad was useless, since he could <laughs> never possibly know that the combination was one nine five seven. What did you say? Was it four one five three? Was it eight zero one nine five seven six five four three? Or sorry, one oh no! It's, oh, you meant five eight seven four? No, no, no! Wait, you said two six three nine, right? Zero eight five six. Damn. Okay, okay. One four five. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing <laughs> random buttons on the keypad, 
Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. All right. We're going to see what happens when we go down. Oh, Stanley. Oh, yes. A new you know, ending. You really aren't going anywhere. And I don't say that deceitfully. I truthfully mean that there isn't a story down here. The story was back up where I told you to go in the first place. Right now, you're just running around looking at empty halls. And frankly, that's perhaps even more infuriating for me. Oh, so why don't baby. you throw me a bone? Give me a chance and just let me tell the story I want to tell, hmm? Wow, sounds like you're begging me for mercy, aren't you? Okay. <laughs> What's... okay. Now listen carefully. This is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Uh, okay, let's see what happens. Good. Good. Now, if you don't mind, there's something I'd like to show you. But to do that, I think it would be best for us to start from the beginning. What? This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Oh my god. <laughs> Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. What? The his job pushing buttons demanded little of him, so there was not much of himself to give. And in this way, on your Stanley's keyboard? job felt less and less like his every day. But he if buttons do anything. need pushing one day, it means they'll need pushing the next and then the next. <laughs> so without question or judgment, Stanley continued to do what the screen told him. One keystroke flowed into another keystroke, flowed into his ride home, flowed into dinner, flowed into waking up, nope, flowed I'm not pressing into going it. to work, and here he was again. Stanley was typing out a complete sentence that said absolutely nothing at all. <laughs> if in reality no one ever actually disappeared Please go from home the office, your and Stanley never got the opportunity to make a decision, to choose which path he wanted to take, Please would his dinner. life still have any meaning? Perhaps when we long for something deeply enough, these hopes and fantasies become so strong in our minds that we truly believe that we're there, controlling that person and living that adventure. To manipulate your own thoughts and emotions might mean freedom from a self-imposed prison, but these delusions can be fatal to those... There's no periods at the end difference. of these sentences. And so, Stanley asked, if that door never opened, if I'll never be able to walk away from those people and from these buttons, is this life still worth experiencing? Am I actually happy? Stanley answered this question by pushing a button. Please then die. Then he pushed a button, and then he pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. Then he pushed a button. Wow. Now that was that was a terrible ending. Let's let's we can't end the video on that. We're gonna. I think there's. There's, there's got to be at least one more, because there was a blue door. So we'll try that. All right, we're going through the blue door this time. Go. Uh -huh. Aha. Perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, look at, look at that. Went through the blue door. I still what? don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. What? You see? What? It's nothing. No one's even built this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. It's just a bunch of skybox and dev wall textures. That's it. <laughs> Is this what you were looking for? Was it worth ruining the story I'd written out for you? I put a lot of time into that, and now you... Well, here you are now, just looking at nothing. To think that that's all I needed to make in the first place, just a whole lot of nothing, and you would have been happy. Well, hey, you still need a little something to do. Am I right? Here, let me load up another map. See if there's something in here that'll keep you occupied. Oh, oh. God. Ah, here's one. Let's boot this up. We'll see if you like it. What? Oh, my God. This game is awesome.
It's rooting. Come on. Why is it taking so wrong? What? Okay. Hello, cry of fear. Well, Stanny, is this any better? I don't know why it would be. This map wasn't even made for you. <laughs> at least I created a world specifically for you. This is the Half-Life 2 train mind. station. I wanted to make you a leading man. This one, well, I'm afraid you're on your own there. Interesting. Do I have to go this way? Ha! <laughs> There's nobody here. It's kind of creepy. Uh. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really <laughs> stupid. He probably only got his job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That, or with drug money. Also, Stanley's <laughs> addicted to drugs and hookers. I'm addicted to hookers, apparently. This way? I don't want to talk over the narrator, so, you know. Oh. Hold up, Oswald. What? I spent so long talking about you. Why don't we just take a break from that and talk about something else for a change? Um... Well... According to Wikipedia, more than 90% of the night sharks caught off northeastern Brazil contain mercury concentrations higher than that considered safe by the local government. Now, this is fascinating. Don't you want to know more about the night sharks? Oh, no, of course not. All you want to hear about is yourself, isn't it? That's right. Well, fine. You haven't listened to me once so far. I can't expect you to turn that around now, can I? Nope. Thank you. Ooh. <sighs> Is this the end of the line? Yes. I don't suppose this was a particularly fulfilling experience. Wait. Oh. Hold on. What are you What are you doing? What What I do? There's a light over here. Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. That's fine with me. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it, you know that. Stanley, come back. What? What? What happened? The narrator's gone. <laughs> what? It, just, the doors are all open. I can just, I can do what I want. I'm free. No keypad. Okay. <laughs> what? It's sad, I know. But all stories must come to an end. Of course, they say it's the journey that truly matters and not the destination, and I like that idea. To think we might value the paths we walk as much as the places they lead us. Now, I don't know what sort of story you've ciphered out of that world you've made for yourself, but I hope that being the leading man was everything it's cracked up to be. I know it can be a little hard getting around without someone looking over your shoulder, but this is simply the nature of freedom. Besides, I haven't really gone anywhere. <laughs> Maybe you don't want a guide, but I think I'll always have a place here at the end of every story. I'll step in and wrap things up with a nice piece of dialogue and a reflection on life that makes sense of whatever path you've chosen to walk. And for now, I'm happy to be the destination instead of the journey. But only for now. <laughs> Jeez. Well, this one actually says the end. 
So this was the true ending, I guess. Whew, well, that was fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, like this video. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Think critically.